Well. That kid is sharp. Oh, he's yeah, sharp. He's, uh, I he's, know he is. He's, he's, he's got a future he's, in UFO investigation. <laughs> he's got a future in a lot of things. He does well in school, too. Well, you, good for him. I'm, I'm almost as proud of him as you are. You don't hear young folks like that anymore, not very often. That's great. Oh, he's my kid. <laughs> yeah, well, good job. Good job. Thank you. All right. And thank you very much for staying up late and sharing that with us tonight. Yeah. That's a very strange thing. It was yeah, a very strange very thing, and we were really looking forward to it. I couldn't believe it. Somebody wanted to actually air it and everything. And, and you'll, you know, the UFO is a UFO. We don't know what it is, where it came from. That's why they could call them UFOs. Here, it could be from somewhere else. But That's it, right. But it, it always right. kind of gives you kind of chills to wonder what it really was. Yep, yep, yep. And you did see it accelerate, huh? Like he described. It's... He saw it accelerate. I see. What, like I said, we have very limited viewing, and when it came behind, but my friends said, "What in the world was that?" And then it went on the other side of the tree, and then we all saw it. Me and my son saw it, and her. And then when I said, "Come on, let's," and then my two little, other little kids were with me. I was like. Come on, let's go see if we can find it. And we ran up the alley because there was no other way to get any other viewing. So we had to, like, go up our alley and down another alley. And by that time, it was gone. But Rennie said he saw it, like, out Mm -hmm. of here. All right. So he described it as having a dome, a rounded top, and a squared-off bottom. Well, yeah, but yet the whole thing was rectangular, but... Uh, that's my, my neighbor also said that she saw a dome like top on it. Uh huh. And I didn't, what I saw was a, a square off top, but like to a rectangle. And that's all right. But it's, it's, it's weird no matter how you describe it. I, I, yeah, yeah, it was definitely, it was, it seemed large for, you know, being close to here or, or just large in its size. I don't know. And yeah, it, it was pretty quick. <laughs> okay. And you didn't see any propellant or anything coming out. No, of the no, air, no, nothing you? like that. No noise, no propellers, no. Uh-huh. Just these weird-looking wings coming out. Very and, low and very close to us. Yeah. Okay. We got that. Uh-huh. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, yeah, that's about the. That's as much as I can give you. Well, you now. did a great see, job. You did again, a great but... job, and we we appreciate your sacrifice of staying up late for us. All right. Thanks to all three of you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Listening. You bet. Okay. All right. Good night. Are you Good night. Too. Bye. I I gotta admit I've not heard a description like that before. I haven't either, Jeff. But she actually originally said black hat shaped object with bat like wings. Uh-huh. But the fact that the well, three of them, noted some acceleration yeah. certainly. He was uh, right. He was right on that thing. I, you can hear right. it. I am going to look at the winds aloft. I haven't done that yet, but I'm mm-hmm. going to do a little more checking. It's a worthwhile case of uh, mm-hmm. diving into more. Yeah, and for perhaps sure. Perhaps we'll get some other reports from other listeners. That would be good. I, I again have not heard of anything like that before. That's no, very. I strange. haven't either. <laughs> when when you get uh, phone calls from people. How do you handle it? You, you, you do welcome reports, I'm sure, to UFOs. Uh, give your website again, Bill. Okay, it's www.ufosnw.com, and it's also compatible with mobile devices. You can give me a report from your iPhone if you want. And uh, I prefer internet written reports with phone numbers. I do entertain calls, but uh, having written reports with a possibility of, uh, you know, personal interview is my preference. Oh, but I do, absolutely. I do take uh, phone messages. I do take faxes. There's many ways of getting reports uh-huh. to me. I have a utility where they can send very large files up to two gigabytes. And uh, it's all on my Report UFO sighting page, which uh, is on the front menu, Report UFO sighting. So I encourage the listeners to provide comments with existing reports or to send in new reports with sketches, videos, and uh, also photos, of course. So it's 
But again, we, we have many different ways where people can uh, send us uh-huh. information. Are we getting any reports of the old-fashioned flying discs? Or are they Absolutely. Kind of... I we still are. get flying disc reports. Some photos. Ironically enough, I had the best flying disc photos in mountainous areas. Uh, Washington State, Mount Adams, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, many disc objects over those areas. Of course, that's where it all started. June of 1947, nearly uh, in a few days, Jeff, uh, June 24th. That's right. To be specific, uh, 65 years ago. Kenneth Arnold. Kenneth Arnold saw the nine discs. Yeah, they were not... uh... They, they really weren't discs. They, they were more... Uh, they had a notch cut out of them, so to speak. Right. But there were, were many disc sightings mm-hmm. right after that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, that summer of 1947 was quite a peak in uh, disc sightings. And uh, some people have gone back and pulled out of archived newspaper reports. Uh-huh. Many we, of those reports from California, Washington, and Oregon. We had a very uh, strange, thank you for sending it, report from two men who said they were fishing off the coast of uh, Cannon Beach, Oregon. And just so you folks out there know, uh, both Bill and even I uh, tried to talk one or both of them into coming on the program, and we we could not get a response from them. So we have to put that in the gray basket of potential hoaxes, unfortunately. Of course, it was such an extraordinary report that the possibility they were contacted almost immediately by those who would have them say no more is another way to look at what happened. When when people go dark, as it were, silent, two things. One, hoax, or two, they've been told to shut up. Or two and a half, they just don't want to talk about it because they don't want to get involved. That happens too. But it was a very interesting report they filed with you. I thought so, too, and myself and James Clarkson, who actually brokers a lot of my investigative reports and sends them out to other investigators, we got a pretty good team together now. People can read about us, uh, just go about us on my homepage. But uh, Jim was equally uh, taken by this particular report, and and, uh, he could not get a response. But... uh, as I mentioned to you previously off the air, the most hoaxers provide uh, invalid contact information. That was not the case with these people. Uh-huh. And where they indicated they had extensive physical problems as a right. result of the study, they did report the case to me, I believe, a little over a month after it happened. All right. Now, I posted it right away. Uh-huh. I posted it that day I got it. Huh. So somebody got to them after that, perhaps that happened. I did get a subsequent email, not in response to my questions, but on my other email address. Uh, the same person contacted me again. And again, I re- replied, didn't get an answer back. So right. not the first time it's happened, and I have had some cases, even cases with forensic data, one in particular, an implant. I think I talked about this on the show previously. Got it analyzed. It was quite a strange metallic alloy, not seen by this metallurgist before. Mm-hmm. And the witness went totally cold. Mm-hmm. And up to that time was completely responsive, completely cooperative, almost overly cooperative, and then dead silent. Right. Well, that's, I don't. I don't know the reason for that. Well, suspicious. All right, we'll be uh, back in just a couple minutes. Hold on, gang.
Okay, and we are back with Bill Puckett. All right, Bill, we just have one segment left. Our uh, third guest is not answering, so we'll have to do that next time. What I wanted Sorry to do... To hear that. I, I did call him and left him a voicemail uh, saying that, you know, it would be uh, around 9 or a little later. Yeah, well, uh, before... let's try and get him on uh, maybe next week. Okay. We can do it... Uh, well, uh... We can do it next Friday if you want. That'd be that'd be fine. Okay, I'll try to contact him again and see yeah. if uh, see if he's willing to come on. He 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 was somewhat uh, hesitant, but then he decided he would do it, and so uh, I found him to be quite cooperative. So I'm surprised that uh, uh, we're not able to get a hold of him. Well, but, uh, we we've it, been. It uh, is an interesting case yeah. and another. Uh, Another strange uh, environmental case where a lot of things happened, and it's worthy of uh, well, tell us about his discussion. yeah. Tell us about his sighting. Okay, well, first off, it wasn't necessarily a triangular shape. It was so bright that he couldn't tell the shape. There were two witnesses. Uh, they were returning home to Yucca Valley, California from Indio, California, which is in the Mojave Desert, uh, east of Los Angeles, not too far from Edwards Air Force Base, which is where the space shuttle lands uh, when they can't come down at the other location in Florida. They uh, they had been in a casino. They weren't drinking uh, in Indio, and they're on the way home, and they saw this very bright, what he thought was a circular light, big as a full moon. And then he's about to make a turn in his car stall, right, when the light showed up, and lights went off. And he tried to take a photo with his cell phone, and his cell phone was dead. The object moved across his path fairly fast, As soon as it departed, his car would start again. And then he drove home, and he he saw a police officer, and he stopped and reported it to a police officer and told him what had happened. And and the police officer, as usual, dismissed the incident and and had not any, had no other reports. But the witness is a, retired military police investigator from the Marine Corps, and he had some connections, so he contacted the 29 Palms Marine Corps Air Ground Center, which is close to where he lives, and the base had no explanation, said they would look into it and get back to him. He never did receive a return call. So, given the background of the witness, the fact that his girlfriend also saw it, I also interviewed her, and the fact that it's another one of these uh, electromagnetic interference cases where the interference with a well-tuned car that before or since had no problems, and also um, malfunction of a cell phone certainly is indicative of uh, uh some propulsion system causing some environmental uh, interference. I thought it was quite a, a compelling case yeah. and uh, would like the witness to uh, describe it in his own words. Well, let's Perhaps, try and uh, let's try and get him on next week. How about that? Next okay, Friday night? I'll, I'll do what I can. I can't promise, but I'll, I will contact him, try to contact him. Right. Right. Very and, good. Uh, that... Uh, you know, we, we have a lot of other cases that perhaps we can discuss in the future. Uh, there's a case down in Crescent City, California, I'm working on where some UFO activity, and then the witness saw military jets pursue, 